Hi, this is Kevin from the Beekeeper's Corner Podcast. Today I'm going to make some fondant to feed the bees for emergency feeding. Let's go over everything I have here on the table. It's what you need to get this job done. First thing, I have 10 pounds of sugar here. I'm going to mix that with a little bit of corn syrup. This is clear corn syrup as opposed to the dark corn syrup. You want to make sure you get the clear version of it. I have a little bit of lemon for the lemon juice to invert the sugar. And then in the mix, I have a mixer, stand mixer, which you're going to use. You probably want to do this with a stand mixer. I don't think you could do it with a hand mixer. It takes a lot of oomph to mix the concoction after it's done. Have a pot. I'm going to boil four cups of water in here as part of the solution. And after I get done mixing it, I'm going to line my cookie sheets, multiple, with parchment paper and pour it out. It should cool pretty quickly. I have a couple other things here on the table, a measuring cup of course, and this is a key instrument, this is a thermometer. This happens to be a candle thermometer. You could use um, a candy thermometer. Usually you want to get to about the softball stage for this. So this recipe that I'm going to use came from a friend, Bob Kloss, and he got it from DC Honeybees off the internet, a YouTube channel. He's changed the proportion a little bit, and I've seen the fondant that he's arrived at, which is really good. It's a soft Play-Doh-like consistency, and we're hoping we can emulate that. So let me tell you what goes into this. You need four cups of water. You're going to get that to the boil. Then you're going to add a quarter cup of corn syrup. To that, you're going to add the juice of a lemon. It should be about a tablespoon. And of course, you're going to add the 10 pounds of pure white sugar. You're going to boil that on the stove until it gets to a consistency where it's bubbling and it gets to the 245 degrees. And then you're going to shut the stove off and let it cool down to about 180 to 200 degrees. Once it gets to that stage you'll pour it in the mixer and you'll beat the formula until it starts to develop a white sheen to it. It's going to start to crystallize and you'll start to see it turn from clear to white. When it gets to that white stage, take it out, pour it on your cookie sheets and it should cool relatively quickly. I'm going to be careful at the end that you don't leave it in your mixer too long because if it seizes it up it'll become one big hard crystallized mess. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll get things measured out and get our water on the boil. All right, my water's to the boil. I'm going to add my ingredients in. This is one tablespoon of lemon juice. I'm going to add the corn syrup. I've got a quarter cup here. This is a great plunger for sticky stuff. You can use honey and peanut butter and things like that. It works really well. This one's made by KitchenAid. There's other ones out there on the market if you look around. Now what I'm going to do is pour in my 10 pounds of sugar. And I'm going to give this a stir until it's all combined. And then I'm going to let it come to a boil. It's interesting as you add the water or the sugar, the water is coming up around it. And now I get a big wooden spoon and start stirring this until I get it combined. And then I'll measure the temperature and let it come up to 245 degrees. You can see now the bubbles are just starting to form. It's going to start to boil in a minute here. It's about 225 degrees. One thing I've been doing is I have it over medium-high heat, not full blast, and I'm stirring it. I want to make sure that what's on the bottom of the pan is not getting heated too quickly in browns. 
You don't want to burn this because if you brown it, it's bad for the bees. But it's just now coming to the boil at 225. You can see now it's actively boiling. It's going north of 225 and we're going to keep an eye on it here until we get to the 245 range that we're looking for. At this point what I expect is happening is it's cooking off some of the moisture. I'm just going to let it run. It's going to get there pretty quickly is my guess so we're going to make sure we keep an eye on it and we'll keep stirring it. We're at 240 degrees. It's been about 20 minutes or so. One thing we noticed is that the liquid has turned from white, as you saw earlier, to a clear. And the bubbles have settled down some as the water has cooked out. So we're just about there. And about five more degrees to go. I think I'm going to take it to 242 and shut it down because the residual heat from the pan should bring it up to 245. And then we're going to let it cool down, let it get to 180 to 200 degrees before we put it in the stand mixer and give it a swirl. Okay, we're at 242, 243, just under 245. Going to reach over here and turn it off. Let it roll up to 245, and then as I said, let it roll down to one, between 180 and, one, and 200. So let's say 190, and we'll pull it off. Okay, so I have my mixture off the stove. It's cooled down just a little bit. It's about 230 degrees. Before it cools down too much, I figure while it's hot, I'll dump it in the mixing bowl. The other thing you can notice, I have my parchment lined sheets ready to go. So let me go ahead and dump it. Now, obviously, this is scalding hot and it's liquid sugar. So if you get it on yourself, you're really going to burn yourself bad. So take your time. Be very careful with this. And to that end, I'm going to take this out. You can see by the color of it, it's very clear. And it fills the bowl nicely. So I still have to let this cool to about 190 degrees, so I'm going to let it sit here. Transferring it into this bowl will also help it cool off because this has been heated up. So we'll sit and wait until we get the right temperature. Okay, the temperature is down around 195. I'm ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. It should go from a clear to a creamy white consistency, and then we'll take it out and pour it on the baking sheets. want to stop it for a second. I've been running it for about five minutes. You can see that it's already turned white. I have, um, have it up high enough that it's slapping around as it goes through and I think that's going to incorporate some air in it. But five minutes it's already turned a pale white. Okay, the mixture's been beating for about 10 minutes. I could see the change in viscosity. It's already thickened up. You could see the air bubbles popping on the surface that have been incorporated in, incorporated in from the mixing process. I think I'm ready to pour this. Uh, let's get ready and we'll pour it out into sheets. We'll do one, see how it turns out, and if it's good, we'll do the rest of them. So I'm going to be really careful here because I know this is still really hot. In fact, the mixing paddle is hot. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to pour these out. The good news is I got a little piece of it and I took it off and rolled it up and it's perfect like a Play-Doh thing. So go ahead, pop this off. This is extremely hot, so I have to make sure I use mitts. 
just going to pour it slowly to let it fill in. I think that's good. And I can see already it's got a good consistency to it. So we'll do the other two pans and maybe we'll get a fourth one out of it. We'll see what happens here. Okay, we get number two here. Go for number three while I'm at it. and scrape this down but three pans out of it and this will fill this final pan and we'll be good to go so it should take uh, just a short amount of time for this to cool off and I can wrap it in another piece of parchment paper or I could leave it just like this a single layer um, pretty happy with this we'll shoot a little ending after it cools off and we'll show you what it looks like So here you see the finished product. When I was mixing it, it was really softball stage, but when it hardened, it actually hardened a little harder than soft Play-Doh. And one of the things I know is I cooked it up to 245 degrees. If I wanted this to be a little bit softer, I guess I'm gonna cook it down lower, 238, 240. I'm gonna try that next time I make a batch. This is still good enough. When you take it, you could break it into little pieces, which is the key thing for me. I want to be able to put this on a hive over top of a cluster. It's very dry here in the wintertime while I'm shooting this. In the summertime, this would be a little softer and it will also absorb moisture in time and become a little bit softer. Right now, it's a little bit stiff. I can break it into little pieces and actually, it tastes pretty good. This is an example of a piece of hard candy that I bought that you could feed the bees. And this thing is like a brick. There is no separating it. You're going to have to put this whole brick on top of the hive. So at this point, I like the way this is. When I cook the next one, I'll probably cook it a little bit softer. I'm going to store these in this bin and keep them covered off and make sure that no ants or anything are going to get to them before I use them. So that's it. This is how you make fondant for your bees. Hope you enjoyed the video.